Capacitors are ubiquitous components in electrical and electronic circuits. They come in many different sizes and shapes. Though they are passive components like resistors, capacitors play distinct roles in circuits, from filtering to frequency tuning. Fundamentally though, a capacitor's main function is to store electrical energy. But how exactly does this work? At its core, a capacitor consists of two conductive plates separated by a dielectric, which is a non-conductive material. In their quiescent state, these plates are electrically neutral. The number of positive and negative charges on each plate is at an equilibrium. However, when connected to a voltage source, like a battery, the plate linked to the positive terminal starts losing electrons, becoming positively charged. In contrast, the plate attached to the negative terminal receives electrons, thus becoming negatively charged. As the capacitor continues to charge, the voltage across its plates begins to increase. This charging process persists until the voltage across the capacitor equals that of the external voltage source. The accumulated charges set up an electric field represented by this equation, where V is the potential difference or voltage and D is the distance between the plates. The electric field lines, which extend from the positively charged plate to the negatively charged one, signify the capacitor's stored potential energy. Unlike a simple battery, the energy is not in the charges themselves but the field they create. After a capacitor is charged, it maintains its charges at the plates even when the voltage source is removed. Now, if a conductive path between the plates is provided, the accumulated electrons on the negatively charged plate begin to move towards the positively charged plate in an attempt to neutralize the charge disparity. This movement of electrons constitutes the discharge current. As the discharge progresses, the electric field established between the plates starts to decrease in intensity. Each electron that returns to the positively charged plate reduces the strength of this electric field. Consequently, the energy stored within the capacitor is released into the circuit. The time taken for the capacitor to discharge is not uniform and can vary. This duration is influenced by factors such as the capacitor's inherent properties and the specific characteristics of the connected circuit. Engineers exploit this time dependency in various applications, including creating precise time delays or shaping waveforms in electronic systems. Now let's discuss the concept of capacitance. The ability of a capacitor to store energy is quantified by its capacitance. This parameter is influenced by the dielectric material used, represented by epsilon, the area of these plates, A, and their separation distance, D. By altering the dielectric, we effectively modify epsilon. Different materials have distinct permittivity values, affecting the strength and effectiveness of the established electric field. Increasing the plate area directly impacts the capacitor's ability to hold more charge. Larger plates provide more surface for this charge accumulation. Lastly, as the separation between the plates D, diminishes, the electric field between the plates strengthens. This makes it easier for the capacitor to store energy, amplifying its capacitance. Hence, reducing D elevates the capacitance. In essence, for a higher capacitance, one would opt for a material with a greater dielectric permittivity, plates with expansive surface areas, and ensure that these plates are closely spaced. So, in designing capacitors, engineers and scientists look for the optimal combination of dielectric material, plate size, and separation to achieve the desired capacitance. The unit of capacitance is the farad, named in honor of Michael Faraday. Practical applications, however, more commonly utilize subunits such as microfarads, nanofarads, and picofarads. That wraps up our deep dive into capacitors. I hope this breakdown helped clarify things for you. If you found it useful and are keen to learn more about similar topics, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.